Greetings. This is the Commander's Beacon, and I'm Eric. And we're here to talk about unconventional ways that you might build your commander deck. Kind of like playing Morophon as the leader of a mere tribal deck. I'm kidding, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. So today we are looking at a deck tech featuring a brand new commander from Commander Legends. It's Imoti, Celebrant of Bounty. This is a new Simic uh, Cascade commander. And I can see from EDH rec that a lot of builds with Imoti feature a lot of you know, big, heavy-hitting creatures like uh, Craterhoof Behemoth. Um, instead, we're going to focus on slinging big spells and copying things. And we're going to try not to do too many obnoxious Simic things, but no promises. Uro, Kinnon, Chulane, Thrasios. Simic is probably the scariest two color combination in Commander. I mean, when you play Simic, you get the best card draw and the best mana ramp. A well functioning Simic deck might accrue more resources on the board and more cards in hand than all of its opponents combined. Now, if you like to just completely dominate the whole table at your game night, if you like to have all eyes focused on you, asking, okay, how are we going to deal with this threat? Then you probably want your commander to have both blue and green in its color identity. And I wish I could tell you that we're doing something different today, that we're playing the nice version of Simic. But this isn't Gore Muldrek Amphenologist. This is Imoti, Celebrant of Bounty. We're going to do some disgusting Simic things. But this won't be your typical Imoti Cascade deck. I mean, Apex Devastator lets you cascade four times when it enters the battlefield for 10 mana. Now this is hilarious, and it's in 70% of the 101 Imoti decks on EDH rec right now. But we've got some more cunning ideas than simply tapping out for a big spell once each turn during our main phase. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's introduce our leader. Imoti Celebrant of Bounty is a 3-1 Naga Druid that costs 5, uh, 3 and Simic. It has Cascade and says spells you cast with CMC 6 or greater have Cascade. Now Cascade currently appears on only 36 magic cards and only 11 in Simic colors. When you cast a spell with Cascade, uh, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Then you put the exiled cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. So a couple of points about Cascade. First, it generates free card advantage by giving you another card from your deck, and it generates free mana advantage by casting that spell for free. Of course, it's also inherently random, uh, though with some extreme deck construction you could control it a bit more. Uh, for example, in our Imoti deck, uh, since Imoti costs 5 mana, uh, if we only use one card in our deck that costs 4 mana or less, then casting Amodi will automatically cascade into that one specific card. But that's very, very extreme. We're not doing anything like that right now. The other thing about Cascade is that that random spell you cascade into will resolve before the spell that had Cascade. Uh, for example, if I cast Amodi and get a Cultivate from the Cascade trigger, then Cultivate will resolve before Amodi. Uh, there might be instances in which you can build with this rule in mind. Uh, additionally, multiple instances of Cascade do indeed stack, and that's why Apex Devastator is so silly. And finally, the spell you cast with Cascade is actually being cast. Uh, that means it can be counterspelled. Uh, that means if you have spell copying effects, uh, you can copy it. That means if that spell you Cascade into has Cascade itself, it will chain you into getting yet another Cascade trigger. And that's probably the most straightforward way to build Imoti, to gem in as many Cascade value cards as you can. With a carefully tailored mana curve, you could cast a 10 drop with Cascade, like that Apex Devastator, and then maybe one of those Cascade triggers gives you an 8 drop with Cascade, like Maelstrom Colossus. And since that has Cascade, maybe you get a 7 drop with Cascade, like Ingenuity Engine, and so on. So, a, so you can start with a single card that has Cascade, and end up just 
either by luck or maybe by top deck manipulation, chaining into several spells that all have Cascade. And again, each spell you cast off of a Cascade trigger is actually being cast. So if it's CMC is six or more and you have Imodi on the field, this will again give you another Cascade trigger, uh, even if that spell doesn't have Cascade built in already. Again, it's inherently random, but it's really fun and can be very powerful. Now, I don't mean any disrespect to the Imodi Cascade strategy. Again, it sounds like a lot of fun. But I'm also a little bit hesitant to play a deck where I only cast one spell per turn during my main phase and then just randomly generate a bunch of value on top of it. Uh, I want to be a little bit more responsive. Uh, so we're playing something that's a little closer to a Spell Slinger variant of Imoti. Uh, EDHREC's average Imoti deck has 31 creatures, but we're only running 20. Uh, to make up for that, we do have 19 instants and 18 sorceries. Of course, Imodi is going to play 6 plus converted mana cost tribal no matter what. Uh, we are going to be playing with a lot of instant speed spells that cost 6 or more, and this should really put your opponents on edge when, I'm, when Imodi is on the battlefield. Again, a, a typical Imodi deck will you know, cast that Terastodon during their main phase, and as long as Imodi is on the battlefield, they'll cascade into something else. But your opponents have time to respond to most of this. Uh, nothing has haste, nothing's attacking them right away. But what if I get a Cascade trigger from Commence the Endgame? Uh, this is an instant that costs 6 and 2 blue. It draws us some cards, it makes us a creature token, but that's fairly irrelevant. Uh, most importantly, because it's an instant, I can cast it whenever I want to. If my opponent's attacking me with a flying creature, for example, I can cast Commence the Endgame in response to that attack, and if I'm Odie's around, then maybe I cascade into a Thrix the Sudden Storm to get a surprise blocker. Of course, Thrix doesn't have Flash, but because I can cascade into it, I can sort of give Flash to any random spell or creature in my deck, uh, as long as I can cast a more expensive instant speed spell first and cascade into it. And if we cascade at the end of the turn before ours, then any creature we cascade into essentially has haste, as our opponents will have minimal time to do anything about it before it can attack. So with this deck, we're really focusing on cascading at the best possible moment. We want to be able to surprise our opponents by chaining it to big, explosive spells at the least opportune time for them. So let's get into how this deck works. So, we need spells that cost 6 CMC or more, and we really want to focus on expensive spells that we can cast at instant speed. So we're running 10 cards that can be cast at instant speed and have CMC 6 or greater. Uh, there's 4 creatures with flash and 6 instants. Draining Wilk is a 1-1 illusion that costs 6, but it also has flash and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you counter target spell and put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on Draining Wilk, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Now, in most decks, I would advise against paying 6 mana for a single counter spell, uh, but here it does all the things we want. Uh, we get an instant speed blocker, we get a cascade trigger when we need it, and we get some counter magic all in one. Now, new in Commander Legends, uh, Sakashima's Protege has flash and cascade, and it enters the battlefield as a copy of any permanent that entered the battlefield this turn. Did your opponent just play Great Henge? Well, you can have one too. Did I mention it costs 6 mana? So if Imodi happens to be around, then Sakashima's Protege cascades twice. And remember, anything that you cascade into when casting Sakashima's Protege will resolve first, so if it's a permanent, you could have Sakashima's Protege enter as a copy of it. But I'm much more interested in copying my opponent's things. Uh, Pearl Lake Agent isn't great, but it's a big body with flash, and there really aren't many good instants or flash creatures in Simic Colors with CMC 6 or more, uh, so we'll take what we can get. This is a 6-7 Leviathan that costs 5 blue-blue, it has flash and it can't be countered. It has prowess, though that doesn't matter too much since we're not casting tons of spells on a single turn. And it doesn't have any evasion. Uh, but you can return three lands to your hand to return the Pearl Lake Ancient to your hand. Uh, this gives it a bit of protection, uh, though bouncing three lands is kind of asking a lot. But then again, it also means you get to recast this guy for another Cascade Trigger. Our last creature with flash is Torrential Gear Hulk. This is a 5-6 artifact creature that costs 4 and 2 blue, of course as flash, and when it enters the battlefield you can cast an instant spell from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. That spell gets exiled instead of going to your graveyard when you cast it this way. 
So, Torrential Gear Hulk. Let this sink in. This thing is perfect. This thing is amazing. I thought Draining Welk did all the things we want, but actually, Torrential Gear Hulk does all the things we want. It can be cast at instant speed. It gives us a Cascade Trigger from Imodi. It gives us another free cast of another instant in our graveyard, which is hopefully a big, powerful 6 plus CMC spell that gives us yet another Cascade Trigger. That means when we cast Torrential Gear Hulk, we could be getting a free 6 CMC instant and 2 Cascade Triggers. This card is insane. Does Simic really need this? Dig Through Time, Opportunity, Commence the Endgame. These are all instants that cost 6 or more mana, and they draw us cards. Now, there's nothing too notable about these, but I will point out that Dig Through Time has Delve. Uh, that means you can exile cards from your graveyard when you cast it to reduce its cost by 1 for each card that you exile. So you can cast it for only 2 blue mana. But this doesn't reduce its converted mana cost. That means it will still cascade as if it were an 8 mana spell. Uh, supplant form and gather specimens. These will blow out our opponents and steal their things while giving us a cascade trigger if our commander is out. Gather specimens just says, if a creature would enter the battlefield this turn under an opponent's control, it comes into play under your control instead. Uh, most of the time this will just steal us a single big creature as someone is casting it. Uh, but we can all dream of responding to Rise of the Dark Realms with Gather Specimens, right? And Supplant Form bounces any creature back to its owner's hand, then you make a token copy of it. Now, usually you'll just use this on your opponent's creatures, but you could decide to just bounce your Torrential Gear Hulk back to your hand, too. I'd be impressed. Again, does Simic really need this? Now, I didn't find a ton of instants that did things this deck wants to do and cost 6 or more CMC. And so despite having 27 cards in the deck that cost 6 or more, uh, only 10 of them can be cast at instant speed. So if we really need some more instant speed effects, we can turn any spell into an instant with a couple of our lands. Uh, Alchemist's Refuge can tap for colorless, or you can pay blue-green and tap it to let you cast non-land cards this turn as though they had flash. Uh, Emergent Zone also taps for colorless, or you can pay one and tap and sacrifice it to, again, let you cast non-land cards this turn as though they had flash. Of course, there's also Videlkin Orrery and Leyline of Anticipation. These cost four mana for an artifact or an enchantment, respectively, and they let you cast non-land cards as though they had flash. These are really powerful, but I've left them out of this deck because we'd probably rather be ramping on turns three and four, so they slow the deck down. And we're already focusing on putting instant speed effects into our deck, so we won't get as much use out of these as other decks might. But you could include them, they're good, and no one would fault you for it. But besides getting cascade triggers at instant speed, how are we actually winning the game? Well, we're going to use our opponent's resources against them. So we want to be able to replicate our spells and our opponent's permanents to be able to use against them. Uh, we've already talked about Supplant Form and Gather Specimens, uh, Sakashima's Protégé. In addition to giving us instant speed cascade triggers, uh, these all let us steal or copy our opponent's most powerful permanents. Uh, but we've got some more effects just like this. Spitting Image is a sorcery that costs 6 and creates a token copy of a creature. It also has that magical converted mana cost of 6, so it gives us a Cascade Trigger with Emoti. It also has Retrace, so we can recast it from our graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other cost. Oh, we'll get another Cascade Trigger each time we do that, of course, uh, when Emoti is around. Of course, we'll still run the big high power steal effects. Uh, these don't have Flash, they're sorceries, but they do give us a Cascade Trigger with Emoti, and they can end games. Blatant Thievery steals one permanent from each opponent for 7 mana as a sorcery. I think Agent of Treachery was banned in Standard. This is 7 mana for a 2-3 human rogue that lets you gain control of target permanent when it, when it enters the battlefield. And this stealing effect is permanent. Even if Agent of Treachery leaves the battlefield, you get to keep that permanent that you stole. Uh, having a steal effect come from a creature entering the battlefield is potentially devastating. So if you can sacrifice and recur this creature, or blink it, you could steal all the things. This deck isn't looking to abuse Agent of Treachery like that, but it's still a good card. We're also using a few copy effects to multiply the value of our big explosive spells. A Swarm Intelligence is a 7-mana enchantment that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell. 
you may choose new targets for the copy. And Bremel Amulet is an artifact that reduces the cost of instants and sorceries you cast by one. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you put a charge counter on it, and when it has four or more charge counters, it transforms into Primal Wellspring. Now, this is a land that taps for mana of any color, and when that mana is spent on an instant or sorcery spell, you copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy. So I do want to note that copying a spell doesn't count as casting, so you won't cascade off of spell copies, but again, we're running 27 instants and sorceries, and a lot of them cost 6 CMC or more, even if you only get a single cascade trigger from it, uh, doubling your blatant thievery is still really, really good. Uh, note that Swarm Intelligence copies all of your instants and sorceries, so if you cascade into an instant or sorcery, you'll get to copy that too. But as long as we're playing with all of these high CMC cards, there's still even more disgusting Simic value that we can generate. Let's go over that now. There's a host of cards, uh, both new and older, that reward you for playing spells higher up the mana curve. Uh, these are an obvious fit for a deck like Imodi, and even though we're trying to be different, we'd be kind of silly not to play these. Thunderous Snapper is a 4-4 Turtle Hydra that costs 4 hybrid Simic mana. It has, whenever you cast a spell that has CMC 5 or greater, draw a card. Uh, almost a third of our deck has 5 or more CMC, obvious include. Thrix the Sudden Storm, another obvious include. This is a 4-5 Elemental Giant with Flash and Flying. It says spells you cast with CMC 5 or greater cost 1 less to cast and can't be countered. Again, I'll point out this cost reduction doesn't influence whether or not a spell has Cascade with Imodi, or the CMC of the spell that you can Cascade into. Okay, we have to talk about Aminatu's Augury. This is dumb in this deck. This is a sorcery that costs 8 and when it resolves, you exile the top 8 cards of your library. You can put a land from among them onto the battlefield, and then you can cast a non-land card of each card type from among them without paying its mana cost. Think about that for a moment. So for our deck, Amanatu's Augury could get a creature, an instant, a sorcery, and an enchantment that each cost 6 or more CMC and cast them right now without paying their mana costs. This is dumb. Don't forget that this will also mean five more Cascade Triggers from Imoti. One from Amanata's Augury and one from each spell we cast when it resolves, if those spells are CMC 6 or more. We could actually get an artifact from Amanata's Augury too, but there's only one artifact in the deck with CMC 6 or greater, so it's not too likely that you'll get a sixth Cascade Trigger. But do you really need six Cascade Triggers anyways? Now we do have 19 creatures, 19 instants, and 18 sorceries on our deck, so our chances of getting one of each are pretty good. And of all of those things that we have in our deck, 8 creatures, 6 instants, 7 sorceries, 3 enchantments, and 1 artifact all have CMC 6 or more. So again, if we reveal any of these with Aminoto's Augury, we'll generate an additional cascade trigger for each one. Super disgusting. Uh, finally, Commander Legends gave us two new Simic partners that care about CMCs greater than 6. Brynlin the Moon Kraken is a 6-8 Kraken that costs 8, 6 and 2 blue. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or when you cast a spell with CMC 6 or greater, you may return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. And Galanra, Color of Wirewood, is a 1-2 Elf Druid that costs 2 and a green. It taps for green, and when that mana is used to cast a spell that costs 6 or more, you draw a card. Now, both of these are legendary creatures with partner. Now at first I was considering using Brynlin and Galanra as the commanders of this deck, but let's be honest, they're kind of bad. Uh, Galanra is a very overcosted mana dork. Uh, the card draw payoff is fine, but as you'll typically only get it once per turn at most, it's pretty hard to break. Uh, Brian Lynn is probably even more underwhelming and overcosted. Uh, you won't be playing enough 6 plus CMC spells to bounce too many permanents, uh, even in a Cascade deck like this one. So again, really hard to get more than mediocre value from this. Now, I've included Brian Lynn and Galanra in this deck list to try them out because they're new, but if you're looking to power up this deck to the next level, uh, these two are probably among the first cuts I'd make. Now with these basic building blocks out of the way, let's talk about a few more miscellaneous strategies that this deck uses.
Uh, now, first, we are not all in on the big creature green beatdown plan, uh, so we're going to rely on a few pieces that help protect us while we're getting set up. Uh, propaganda and Elephant Grass are enchantments that slow down attackers. Propaganda costs 2 and a blue, and it prevents creatures from attacking us unless that creature pays 2 for each creature that's attacking us. Elephant Grass costs a single green and also prevents creatures from attacking us unless that creature's controller pays 2 for each attacker. It also says black creatures can't attack us at all. Now, Elephant Grass also has a cumulative upkeep of 1, so we can't hide behind it forever. Uh, but we'll have plenty of defenses later in the game. Sandworm Convergence is an 8-man enchantment that says creatures with flying can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. It also creates for us a 5-5 worm creature token at the end of each of our turns. We're also using mass bounce to slow down our opponents. And again, since we rely a bit more on big instants and sorceries rather than permanents, uh, we might have fewer permanents of our own that get bounced this way. Coastal Breach and Flood of Tears are sorceries that return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Note that they both cost 6 or more, so we can get a Cascade trigger from them, uh, but if we Cascade into a permanent, that permanent will just get bounced right back to our hand. Also note that if we're making token creatures or token copies of creatures, uh, we'll lose those completely, so just like any board wipe, we'll need to be a little deliberate about when we use these. And then Aether Spouts is an instant for 3 and 2 blue that says for each attacking creature, its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Now this can be super devastating for aggressive opponent that might be attacking us with 3 or 5 creatures or more. Uh, first, it's a board wipe that won't hit us. Uh, secondly, because these creatures go into the library, they don't die or produce any death triggers. Uh, they can't be recurred from the graveyard. If the opponent puts the creatures on top of their library, it's going to slow down their card draw because now they need to draw back into those creatures before they can draw any new cards. And because we're running so many high CMZ cards, we'll need spells like Aether Spouts to protect us in, in the early to mid game. Uh, we might be disappointed if we cascade into Aether Spouts outside of the combat phase though. Next we've got even more ways to take advantage of our big spell slinging. Uh, Metallurgic Summonings and Shark Typhoon are enchantments that generate creature tokens whenever we cast non-creature spells, and the bigger the spell, the bigger the token creature. Metallurgic Summonings is an enchantment that costs 3 and 2 blue. It has, whenever you cast an instance or sorcery spell, uh, create an XX Construct Artifact Creature Token, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You can also pay 3 and 2 blue and exile Metallurgic Summonings to return all instants and sorceries from your graveyard to your hand. Now we've only got 4 artifacts in this deck, so we won't get to use this second ability very often, but when we do get to use it, it can be very powerful. And Shark Typhoon is a silly enchantment that costs 6, and says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create an XX Shark Creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So again, big spells turn into big creature tokens. Then there's God Eternal Kefnet, a 4-5 flying zombie god. It's probably the best creature type ever. And it has, whenever you draw your first card each turn, you may reveal it. If it's, if it's an instant or sorcery, you can copy it and cast the copy. And that copy costs two less to cast. I mean, we have so many big, splashy, high mana cost instants and sorceries in this deck that Kefnik can create a lot of value for us here. Then there's Rashmi Eternity's Crafter. This is the very definition of disgusting Simic good stuff. This is a 2-3 Elf Druid that costs 2 green-blue, and it has whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with CMC less than that spell's CMC, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. And if you don't cast the revealed card, you put it in your hand. So this generates card advantage and mana advantage at the same time. I mean, Rashmi is basically a mini cascade once per turn, and it can turn our big spells into even more big free value. We're also running a few pieces of top deck manipulation to get the best value we can from our cascade effects. Uh, because our deck isn't you know, finely tailored to cast an 8 drop with cascade and have that cascade into a 7 drop that has cascade and have that turn into a 6 drop that has cascade and, and so on, uh, we're going to be using top deck manipulation instead to minimize the chances of casting a pearl like ancient and cascading into something small like an unsummon. And so with top deck manipulation, we can either arrange the top of our library to 
you know, make sure that whatever's on top is something that we're interested in. Or with some cards, we can put cards from our hand on top of our library. And in either case, this is just going to let us make sure that we can hit the best card we can with our cascade triggers. So you know, brainstorm, ponder, preordain, serum visions. These all give us a little bit of digging into our deck or sometimes our hand to set up the top card of our library and for just one mana. And we can also use these in the early game to help us smooth out our draws and just hit our land drops. But I really want to talk about scroll rack. Now this is amazing. This is an artifact that costs two. You can pay one and tap it to exile any number of cards from your hand face down and then draw them any cards. Then you put those exiled cards on top of your library in any order. Now Ponder, for example, will let you look at the top three cards of your library and select the best one you'd like to cascade into for your next uh, six plus CMC spell. But Scroll Rack lets you cascade into a big spell that's already in your hand. It also gives you insane card filtering. But Scroll Rack is also over $30. Uh, if you're on a budget, there's plenty of other top deck manipulation cards that work well here. A crystal Ball is an artifact that taps for one and lets you scry two. Uh, Mystic Speculation is a sorcery that costs just a single blue and lets you scry three. Uh, it also has buyback for two, so you can reuse it. And then Soothsaying is an enchantment that only costs a single blue, and it lets you pay X to look at the top X cards of your library and put them back in any order. And of course we're running Castle Vantress. This is a land that taps for blue, but you can also pay two and two blue and tap it to scry two. Now one quick note about playing a Cascade deck. You probably shouldn't run most counter spells. Uh, if I cast a Maelstrom Colossus, for example, and cascade into a Disallow, uh, that counter spell is unlikely to have any good targets. Now, I don't have to cast Disallow, it's optional, so I won't be forced to counter my Maelstrom Colossus or anything, uh, but if I choose not to cast Disallow, I, I won't get anything else instead. I've basically just wasted my cascade trigger. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't run counter spells, it just means you should probably run them sparingly. Or, alternatively, you can run modal counter spells. Uh, Archmage's Charm, Sublime Epiphany, Cryptic Command, Mystic Confluence, Supreme Will. These are all modal counter spells that have counter a spell as one option. Uh, but if you cascade into one of these spells and you don't need a counter spell, you can just pick a different mode and you'll still get value from it. Uh, I'm running Archmage's Charm, Sublime Epiphany, and Cryptic Command in my list, but you could pick any or all of these based on your budget and your preferences. Uh, finally, I want to mention a few of our non-basic lands. Uh, Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more islands, and it taps for blue. And if it enters the battlefield untapped, you can put an instant or sorcerer card from your graveyard on top of your library. Now this is awesome graveyard recursion, and again, we're running a bunch of instants and sorceries. But this can also be used to set up the top card of our library for a devastating cascade effect. Uh, we're running a view of the Zendikar Rising MDFCs, and I'm probably going to be saying this for pretty much every deck I build in the future. These, these Zendikar MDFCs are, are pretty versatile, and I think a lot of decks will want to run, you know, maybe one or two or three of these at the very least. First, Balagad Recovery. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think this card is almost an auto-include in any deck that plays two or fewer colors and has green. It's a sorcery that costs two and green, and it returns a card from your graveyard to your hand. Or, of course, it can be a land that produces green and enters the battlefield tapped. A Selendi Vision is an instant that costs two and a blue, and it lets you look at the top six cards of your library. You reveal an instant or sorcery from among them and put it into your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library. Uh, of course, it's also a land, if you need it to be, that enters the battlefield tapped and taps for blue. Seagate Restoration is a 7 mana sorcery that draws you cards equal to the number of cards in your hand and gives you no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. And because it costs 6 or more mana, it will cascade with Imoti. Of course, it can alternatively be a land that taps for blue. And then finally there's Glass Pool Mimic. This is a 3, th uh, this is a three mana shapeshifter that enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control. As long as we're stealing and copying creatures, we can put this one to good use. Or again, it can be a land that enters tapped and taps for blue. Now, I didn't go over too many of the ramp or removal cards that we're using in this deck. Uh, many of these cards are fairly straightforward and they don't warrant too much discussion. 
uh, but please see the deck list in the description for all of the details. All right, let's go over the deck stats and the budget. This deck comes in at around $200, uh, depending on where you purchase your cards and in what condition. Our average CMC is 4.43, which is probably the highest of any deck I've built so far. But, you know, this is 6 plus CMC tribal, it makes perfect sense. Now, the average IMOTI deck on EDH Rec has an even higher average CMC at 5.06. Uh, that average deck has 29 cards that cost 6 or more CMC. And again, we, we, need, we need those cards to trigger Cascade. Uh, comparatively, our deck has slightly fewer at 27 cards that cost 6 or more CMC. Of those 27 cards, 10 can be cast at instant speed to enable Cascade triggers whenever we want them, uh, plus 2 lands that help us cast spells as though they had flash. Comparatively, the average IMOD deck has only 4 cards that cost 6 or more and can be cast at instant speed. We're running 38 lands, though I am counting 5 um, Zendikar Rising MDFC lands among them. We have 8 cards that can steal or copy creatures. We have 20 total creatures on our deck, 19 instants and 18 sorceries, and 13 pieces of ramp. We have 7 card draw cards and 13 pieces of removal. Of those removal pieces, 10 are single target, and 2.5 or maybe 3 are board wipes. I'm not sure I'd classify Aether Spouts as a board wipe or not, so maybe I give it half a point. And that is my take on an Imoti Spellslinger build. You'll do disgusting Simic things here, again just like you would in pretty much any other Simic deck, but hopefully with your instant speed big spells you'll be giving your opponents much less time to deal with all the threats you generate. But that is all I've got for today. Please like this video or subscribe if you found any of this useful. I'll be posting weekly videos describing all sorts of unconventional ways that you can build your commander decks from budget alternatives to deck techs to top 10 lists. And next time we will be going over a deck tech featuring the new Commander Legends partner commander, uh, Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Thank you for watching.